It's a case of serendipity this week, guys, as I show you, step by step, how to convert this excellent 3D model into a wearable pendant using only free software. Hey guys, three things came together for me this week. Firstly, I was asked by a friend to make her a Stormbreaker pendant. Secondly, lots of you guys have been asking me to demonstrate how to use free software to amend 3D models. And finally, I was very flattered to be approached by Thangs.com asking if they could sponsor one of my videos. So let's get on with it. It begins with a 3D file and Thangs.com was admittedly new to me. Obviously, I'm going to be a little bit biased here, but I did find the website nice looking, very responsive and easy to navigate. It's described as a platform for independent engineers, product designers and 3D CAD enthusiasts, including hobbyists. A sort of GitHub for 3D models. Searching is very easy and, impressively, it's a geometric search, meaning it helps you find models that you're looking for even if they're on other websites. It didn't take me long to find this fabulous Stormbreaker model, but I need to say there are various file formats on Thangs right now and it's still finding its communal feet. So the format you need might not be here, but don't be afraid to ask creators if you can't find what you want. It's that kind of place. Anyway, I downloaded this file and I'll place a direct link in the description to make things easier. The first thing we need to do is think about scale, as amazingly, this model comes in at over a meter or three feet long, so that obviously needs changing. Altering scale is a standard function for most slicer programs like Leechy, Cura, Photon Workshop, G2Box or whatever. Here I'll use G2Box, a free downloadable slicer, and straight off the model looks stupidly big, but that's what the scale tool is for. Just click it and look at the largest dimension, in this case the Y axis at 1133mm. Making sure the lock ratio is activated, highlight it and type in something more appropriate, which will be 50mm. The model has shrunk but stayed perfectly proportioned with all its details intact. Now it's best practice to rename and save the STL file and again all slicers usually do this. In G2Box it's just a case of save as and we'll call it Thor's Stormbreaker 50mm. To function as a pendant we need a loop for a chain or cord to pass through and for that I'm going to be using Blender, an excellent free open source CAD package. Now I can't teach you how to use Blender here, it's just too involved so I'm going to have to assume that you've at least got familiar with the basics. Hopefully you'll follow what I'm up to here, assuming I can figure it out myself. I'll start by deleting everything from the scene, it's not relevant for what we're doing here. Next I'll import our rescaled file. So here it is, floating in the air a little and that's fine for me. I'm not going to reposition it, We'll keep this nice and simple. Moving around the 3D object is done by holding down the scroll button on the mouse. Zooming in and out is done by rolling the scroll wheel. If you're not already aware, this gizmo works a little bit like a compass, keeping track of where the model is in 3D space. It's useful to click on these points to orientate the view of the model squarely to the screen. So to add a loop, we need to go up here and select Add Mesh Torus. Now be careful not to click anything just yet, but let me show you that a small donut shape has appeared just under the axe. It's tiny and it's a bit pixelated, but we can easily change that by selecting this floating menu down here. My major segments are 48 but my minor segments are 12, so I'll change those to 48 as well. And you can see, things have smoothed out quite nicely. 
The major or outside radius is too small at 1mm, so I'll change that to 4. This gives me a very thin band, but by changing the minor or inside radius to 1, we get something more substantial. To move this loop, I need to click this 4 arrowed icon here. You should now see coloured arrows have appeared by the torus, and by clicking, holding and dragging these, I can move the torus to an ideal position. I'm doing this purely by eye, judging where I think it's central to the handle, and where I think it looks best. Now I like that, and we could leave it as it is, but I want to blunt off this sharp tail end of the handle and we can use Blender's sculpting environment to do this. If you look at the scene menu up here, you can see we have two objects, Stormbreaker and the Taurus. We can work on each one individually by selecting it. So right now, we need to ensure Stormbreaker is selected. On the top menu bar, click Sculpting. The Blender environment has changed, and the axe is now effectively made of clay, so we can do a little freehand sculpting to it. Before I do anything else, just let me say that for this video, I will not be using a graphics tablet, only an ordinary PC mouse. If you want to do any CAD work, I'd recommend buying a cheap tablet, like this one from Amazon. It's a great starter piece, and it's what you've seen me using in some of my other videos. But today, with this video, the mouse will do fine. Before you start, you'll need to click the Dynamic Topology tick box. The detail size is 12 pixels, and I like to start with the brush as relative detail. On this side of the menu, you'll see I've selected the Flatten tool, and I'm going to start by just rubbing down the jagged area. You'll notice that the tool doesn't affect the torus, but only the axe, as we previously selected Stormbreaker. By working on the edge, I'm beginning to round it over and give it more shape. It's important to keep moving around to see things from different angles. If you find the torus obscures your view, just deselect this eye icon and it will become invisible. Once I'm happy with the general shape, I change the brush to detail, giving me more control and finer pixelation. Because the mouse has less control than a graphics tab, I turn down the strength of the brush just a little. Here, I checked to make sure things were roughly symmetrical. Finally, I finished off with the smooth tool. And I think that looked pretty good. I switched back to the layout view environment as it was time to combine the axe and the torus into one complete 3D object. To do this, in the Scene menu, I clicked and selected Stormbreaker. Notice the orange halo. Then by holding down Control and clicking Taurus, I selected that as well, as shown by the yellow halo. Now we click Object, Boolean Operators and Union. And we have a finished, amended 3D object. Again, for best practice, we should save and rename this file. So I'll export as an STL and rename it 
Thor's Stormbreaker 50mm finished. All that's left now is to print it, which I'll do on a resin printer. So this time I'll use Lychee as my slicer of choice, which does have a free version available. But a quick word of warning here. When you amend files like we've done here, Lychee often throws a wobbly and expects you to repair them using its built-in features. Whether you do this or not, I typically find that things still work fine unless you've done something a little dire. How you rotate the model on the plate is down to you, but here's how I did things. Yes, I do tend to over support things. I prefer many light supports. A few minutes cleaning up a successful print is far better than hours wasted on a failed print. So for many of my viewers, that's it. They're happy to print and paint their creations, which I sometimes do myself. But for my casting buddies, let's melt a bit of metal. The blue prints are Bluecast X5, and the purple prints are a castable resin that's not on the market yet, so I'll have to keep the name of that to myself for now. Well, I'm very pleased with these. They've cast perfectly for my mind. The real surprise has been this mystery purple castable resin. The wood grain effect is purely accidental and nothing more than the remnants of print layers. But to echo the great Bob Ross, it's a happy accident. So there you go, guys. How to take a 3D model from thangs.com or any print library and amend it with free software to create something unique for personal use. I hope you enjoyed this one guys. Take care and thanks for watching.